Not everything that archaeologists dig up in the course of their work makes sense to them. When they come across something that they can't explain, they tend to turn to scientists or historians for help. Usually, the experts will be able to give them the answers they need. But there are occasions when even the world's best educated people can't make head nor tail of a puzzling archaeological discovery. This video is all about those baffling finds, the ones that scientists struggle to explain away no matter how hard they try. Finding ancient tombs in China is nothing unusual, but in 2016, a tomb discovery was made in Huanghua in the country's Hebei province that had the experts scratching their heads. There are 113 sets of human remains interred within this 2,000-year-old tomb, but they haven't been buried in caskets or mummified. Instead, they've been wrapped in clay pots and then buried close together. This practice wasn't totally unknown in ancient China, but on occasions where examples have been found before, it's been reserved for infants and children. There are adult remains at the site, so there's something different about this tomb, and the experts have no idea what that might be. In all cases, the method of burial is almost identical. The body of the deceased is covered by two or three large clay pots, depending on their size, and then a hole would be drilled into the side of the pots. It's thought that the hole was supposed to allow the soul of the deceased to leave or return to the body as they wished. These days, we don't tend to believe in witches or fear black magic. We even go so far as dressing up as them on Halloween. The Europe of 300 years ago was very different, though, and fear of witches and the harm they could do was genuine. That leads us to the discovery of this witch grave on the southwest coast of Fife in Scotland in 2014. Under this stone are the remains of Lilius Addy, a woman who had confessed to being a witch and even gone as far as claiming she'd engaged in intimate relations with the devil. It's likely that she had psychological problems, but the people living here in 1704 took her at her word and had her arrested. Historical records tell us that she died in prison before she could be tried. But what's she doing buried so close to the shore? The standard practice for disposing of alleged witches was to dump them into mass graves with no dignity or honors. So why was Lilius different? One unpleasant theory is that she took her own life. During the 18th century, this would have been viewed as a crime against God, and the superstitious people of the era believed that suicide victims might come back from the dead to haunt the living. Burying her close to the water might have been a misguided attempt to prevent her corpse from reanimating. Is the Disco Colgant an elaborate hoax or evidence of extraterrestrial life? Scientists and archaeologists are adamant that it's the former, but they've had a hard time disproving the veracity of the artifact. Even dating it has proved to be difficult. Some tests give it an age of around 2,000 years, and others suggest that it's only about 400. However old it is, it's impossible to deny that the design of the artifact resembles the appearance of our own native Milky Way galaxy. There's even a hole in one of the arms of the object in almost precisely the same position that our Sun occupies. The mystery is that while we know what the Milky Galaxy looks like today, such knowledge would have been impossible for people living 400 years ago, let alone 2000. Was the Disco Colganti left here by accident by space travelers? Or is the fact that it so closely resembles the shape of a spiral galaxy nothing more than a coincidence? If it is a coincidence, then what is this bizarre sculpture supposed to represent? We're all familiar with the Pyramids of Egypt. The Great Pyramid of Giza is world famous and is the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world that's still standing today. As impressive as Egypt's pyramids are, they're not as beautiful as they once were. They all used to have smooth coated sides and they were all once capped with pyramidians like this one. Taken from the Pyramid of Amenemhat III, this is the only granite pyramid capstone that's still in existence, and you can find it at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. It's battered and broken, but it's apparent from the small square protrusions on its base that it was designed to fit into the recesses at the top of the pyramid's stonework. Perhaps this one has survived because the monument it was built to sit atop collapsed during the building process. 
The clay, stone, and adobe construction materials used in the creation of the pyramid couldn't bear the weight that was asked of them. And as it was only 30 feet above sea level, the ground was wet. The project was doomed from the start. Mysteriously, some of the hieroglyphics on the side have been scratched out on purpose, making it impossible for us to read or understand them. The tales of Italian geologist Angelo Pittoni are probably too wild to be taken seriously. Pittoni claimed to have direct evidence of aliens visiting Earth, and in evidence, he presented a collection of rocks that he claimed couldn't have originated on our home planet. Even if he's exaggerating, though, his beautiful blue sky stone is a mystery that can't be explained away. Pittoni claims to have found the stone in Sierra Leone in 1990, and it's been a puzzle ever since. The stone doesn't have any properties that explain its blue shade. But that's the least of the problems with it from a scientific point of view. Testing has shown that it's composed of 77% oxygen, which ought to be impossible, with the rest of the rock made of calcium, carbon, and another element that can't be identified. It also appears to be unbreakable. Scientists at the University of Utrecht in the Netherlands heated it to 3,000 degrees Celsius and recorded no changes to the stone at all. Pouring acid on it is said to leave no marks. Unfortunately, the stone vanished after Petoni passed away in 2009, so further study of it is now impossible. Let's talk about another stone discovery made by Petoni that's left experts scratching their heads. This one also comes from Africa, but this time it's in Mali, and it's a lot bigger than Petoni's sky stone. At an altitude of 5,000 feet, he discovered what he claimed to be a sculpture of a female head, and he named it the Lady of Mali. To his eyes, the sculpture is so detailed that not only are the lady's chin, lips, nose, eyes, and forehead clearly visible, but also a headdress that he claimed she's wearing. Pitoni's records state that he climbed the mountain himself to inspect it at close range and concluded that it was carved 12,000 years ago a time long before organized civilizations are thought to have existed on Earth. Petoni went to his grave, believing the sculpture is real, even though scientists and experts claim that the appearance of a face is nothing more than an optical illusion. What do you think when you look at these pictures? Is it a trick of the eye? Or was Petoni correct in his assessment? The Meredith Stone, also known as the Lake Winnipesaukee Egg, has been causing debate between scholars and archaeologists since it was discovered by construction workers in New Hampshire, USA in 1872. It was hiding six feet below the ground and was only found as the workers attempted to erect a new fence post. It might look like an elaborate stone Easter egg, but you wouldn't want to bite into it. It's made of solid quartz. That alone is a problem because quartzite doesn't occur naturally anywhere in New Hampshire. The markings on the surface don't correspond with any known tribal markings made by any Native American tribe, nor anything else ever discovered elsewhere in the United States of America. To add to the puzzle, the egg appears to have been drilled smoothly almost all the way through from top to bottom, and then polished to a clean finish. All of this would require the skills of extremely advanced stoneworkers, and yet we have no idea who might have made it or why. Some archaeologists believe it's a hoax, but then they always say that when they have no better explanation. The reason that archaeologists are so skeptical of the infamous Decalogue Stone of Las Lunas found in Mexico in 1933 is that if it's a genuine article, the entire history of the United States of America will have to be rewritten. That's because the inscriptions carved into the stone are written in a language that loosely resembles the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet and appears to be a record made by a Greek Cypriot traveler named Zakineros, who got lost in the desert. If the story is true, we have to conclude that someone who spoke this language as their native tongue arrived in the USA long before Columbus did, and European settlement of the Americas goes back a lot further than history books tell us. Frank Hibben, an archaeologist, is generally credited with discovering the stone, but he claims he was shown it by a tour guide who said that he'd found it as a child 50 years earlier. In another twist to the tale, Harvard-educated historian Robert Pfeiffer completed an alternative translation of the text in 1949. According to him, 
It's a record of the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament. Our next discovery isn't just one discovery from the ancient world, but several. It's the curious suggestion, made by respected historical figures like Petronius and Pliny the Elder, that the ancient Romans were capable of producing almost indestructible forms of flexible glass. We know that the Romans could make glass, but around the time of Tiberius Caesar, descriptions of unbreakable glass began to appear in ancient Roman texts. The emperor allegedly wasn't a fan of the material, though. In fact, it's said that he himself put an end to the practice of making it because he was afraid the new glass would become a more valuable material than gold and wreak havoc on the Roman economy. On the surface, the idea of unbreakable glass might sound too fantastical to be true, but there's reason to believe that the stories might be accurate. The Romans were aware of and had access to the boric acid that came from the steam vents in the Tuscan Marima outside Rome. If that substance were added to a standard glass mixture, it would result in a type of glass that would be extremely difficult to shatter. We're not sure it would have been flexible, but it would certainly have been tough. There are plenty of stone megaliths in the deserts of Saudi Arabia, but none like the Al Nasla rock formation in the Taima Oasis. The primitive ancient drawings of animals like camels and horses aren't unusual, but what makes this rock so unique is the fact that it seems to have been cut perfectly in half with almost laser-like precision, and then mounted on a pedestal, as if it were a work of art. The inscriptions are about 4,000 years old, so it's reasonable to assume that the cutting work was carried out at about that time too. That presents us with a problem, because there's no ancient technology that we're aware of that would have allowed a rock this large to have been split in two so cleanly. Some scientists who've had the chance to inspect the stone believe that the split was caused by nothing other than weathering, and the fact that the cut is so perfect is just a freak occurrence. But that explanation leaves a lot to be desired. Weathering does many wonderful things, but slicing vertically straight through a rock and leaving the two halves standing like this isn't generally among them. The Dashka Stone also known as the Chandar Slab, appears to be a highly accurate stone map of the Ural Mountains, including gradients, rivers, streams, tributaries, and dams. There's one big problem with that. According to dating that has been carried out on shell fossils found within the rock, it's about 50 million years old. There was nobody around on planet Earth at the time to make such a map, and even if there had been, they would only have been able to make it by observing the land from a long way above it. That's why the stone, discovered in 1999, is such an enigma. The chances of this artifact being created naturally are almost zero. It's made of layers of dolomite, upon which sit a further layer of silicone-enriched glass, and even a calcium topping that makes it easier to see the markings. Some people who've studied it even claim that there are hieroglyphics on the stone albeit not hieroglyphics of a type that anyone's able to translate. It's such a strange, out-of-place object that we're unsurprised that it's been nicknamed the Map of the Creator. Stonehenge is the most famous ancient stone circle in England, and perhaps the most famous in the whole world. But it shouldn't be. If there were any justice, that honor would go to another stone circle that's just a few miles from Stonehenge. It's the Stone Circle of Avebury, and it's a far more complex arrangement of standing stones than its more famous neighbor. The ring was likely built around 4,600 years ago, and is a complicated system of circles within circles, creating an intricate pattern. Evidence suggests that there were once more than 600 stones at the site, although only 76 are still standing today. The remains of a deep trench are still visible around the outer ring of stones, with traces of a pathway leading between the inner stones also evident to the naked eye. The Neolithic people who built the Avebury Stone Circle went to a great deal of trouble to do so, but we have no more idea why they did it than we do about why Stonehenge was built. We can say that it was likely connected to pagan beliefs, but in reality, that's little more than a good guess. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. 
Thanks for watching and see you soon.